Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Well, before we do get started, I do want to let you know this program is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show at support.greatdetectives.net. Or you can also become an ongoing supporter of the program at patreon.greatdetectives.net. Also over at greatdetectives.net this weekend, check out my review of the Big Finish Sherlock Holmes release, The Final Problem Slash The Empty House. And you can get all my reviews that I do at greatdetectives.net automatically delivered to you. You can try that service out free for two weeks for your Kindle. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Dragon. Magnet. Original air date, August the 10th of 1950, and the title is The Big Actor. The story you are about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, brings you Dragnet. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned to narcotics detail. A large hospital in your city is held up. $10,000 in high-grade narcotics is stolen. The bandits escape. Your job. Get them. If you want a long cigarette, smoke the best of all long cigarettes. Smoke extra mild Fatima. Yes, Fatima is the king-size cigarette which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos superbly blended to make it extra mild. To give Fatima a much different, much better flavor and aroma than any other long cigarette. That's why Fatima has more than doubled its smokers coast to coast. Enjoy extra mild Fatima yourself. Best of all long cigarettes. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment... Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Monday, October 23rd. It was foggy in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of narcotics detail. My partner's Ben Romero. The boss is Captain Kearney. My name's Friday. It was 7.16 a.m. when we got to St. Christopher's Hospital, the pharmacy. How you do? Yes? Police officer, sister. You'd like to see Sister Mary Benedict? I'm she. Mother Superior sent us down to see you, Sister. We're investigating the narcotics robbery. Oh, yes, there have been quite a few policemen here in the past hour. I believe it was the fingerprint men who just left. Just a minute, I have their card. Yes, they were from Leighton Fingerprint Division. Stahl and the boys from Leighton Prince. Yes, that's right. Sergeant Harlan Stahl. A sister, we're the investigating officers assigned to the case. This is Sergeant Romero. My name's Friday. Are you a lieutenant? No, I'm a sergeant. I wonder if you could start right from the beginning for us. Just tell us what you know about the robbery. Well, after mass, I went to breakfast, and then I came downstairs here to the pharmacy to open up. You keep the pharmacy locked overnight? Oh, yes, always. We always assign an intern on night duty. He has the key in case any medicines are needed during the night. He's authorized to issue what may be needed upon the doctor's request. Who else has a key to the pharmacy, sister? Well, they're just three keys. Mother Superior keeps one at her desk, and we have one for the intern on duty, and I have one. All right. You want to go on? When I got down here this morning, I started to unlock the door and found it ajar. There were no lights on. I snapped on the wall switch. That one. Mm -hmm. That's when I saw young Jimmy Lyons. That's the intern? Yes, he was unconscious on the floor. I could see his head had been cut. He was bleeding profusely. What'd you do then? I called Mother Superior, and she came right down. Dr. Spencer was summoned. 
He came in and started administering aid to intern lines there on the floor. Is that when you found out the narcotics were missing? No, not just at that moment. Both Mother Superior and myself were quite worried about young Lyon's condition. It was really Mother Superior who first noticed the narcotic safe had been tampered with. Your stories don't exactly jibe there, sister. How do you mean? Mother Superior gives you credit for first noticing the theft. Oh, my, no. She's very charitable, but she's the first one who pointed to the safe. She's very observant. I understand. Go ahead, please. Upon checking the safe, we found that someone had taken our entire store of narcotics. Everything. Is that the safe over there? Yes, that's the narcotic safe. Don't touch that, Mr. Friday. No? No, never. Nothing is to be touched until the police have completed their investigation. Clues. Or well, we're the police, sister. Then do you have all the clues you need? Well, I wouldn't know, but the men from Leighton Fingerprints have dusted everything here, so it's all right to touch things now. That was Mr. Harlan Stall and his men? Yes, that's right. Oh, I didn't know. We understand you have the inventory list. Yes, I have it on my desk. Here. Thank you. We keep a running inventory, so that's the exact amount that's missing. Yes, ma'am. Cocaine and morphine. No bird's eye, Joe. Big haul, huh? Looks like about 10,000 worth. I'd like to have a copy of this inventory, sister. Would you take the carbon? I'd like to keep the originals for my monthly file. That'll be fine. Outside of this intern, Lyons, nobody saw whoever it was. No. Mother Superior and I have interrogated everyone... We made a thorough investigation on our own. I took notes. That's so? Yes, that's the way Father Brown does it. Father Brown? Oh, yes, he's an expert detective. Brown. You wouldn't mean Thad Brown? No, Father Brown. Father Brown. You people have your own detectives now? Oh, my, no. He's not a regular detective. He's more like Mother Superior and myself. Is that right? Yes, he's in England. Solves some really difficult cases. Here, I'll show you. See right here? The Triple Cross, another exciting Father Brown mystery by G.K. Chesterton. Oh. Yes, I have all but one of the Father Brown books. Well, the superior has it. I, I get it after she finishes. Mm-hmm. What's the condition of the intern? He's resting comfortably. Dr. Spencer says he'll be all right. Had to take nine stitches in his scalp. We'd like to talk to him. I'm sure that'll be all right. I don't have to tell you we all think this is a terrible thing. Yes, sister, it is. All those narcotics. Whoever took them will distribute them, won't they? Well, that's our guess, sister. The stuff will be sold to addicts. What makes a dope addict? How do they get started? Why do they do it? I don't know, sister. I give you a lot of reasons. None of them good. None of them good. And for a few moments of what? Tonight they have it and tomorrow they have nothing. That's about the size of it, sister. Stars are setting and the caravan starts for the dawn of nothing. The Bible? No, Omar Khayyam. Before we left St. Christopher's Hospital, we talked with intern James Lyons. Since he was slugged from behind, he failed to see his assailant. He could tell us nothing. The entire hospital staff was screened thoroughly. They could add nothing to what we already knew. Between 6 and 7 o'clock that morning, $10,000 worth of high-grade prescription narcotics had been stolen. Somewhere in the city of Los Angeles was the answer. As in all narcotics cases, speed is the prime factor. Whoever held those narcotics wouldn't waste any time diluting or cutting it and making it ready for quick sale. Our job was to stop them. Five minutes past 8 a.m., we checked in with Sergeant Harlan Stahl at Leighton Fingerprints Detail. Not much help, is it? That's all you got, huh? Yeah, the safe was clean, not a print on it. No prints anywhere in the room. Slugged the intern from behind, took his keys, uh, tore a belt loop off his trousers, opened the safe and waltzed out. Couldn't have been cleaner. Yeah. You didn't get anything on your end, huh? Nothing. Mm. Gentlemen? Captain? I picked one up. Who is he? Junker by the name of Babe Kellogg. He's really seeing, he's seeing Steve, but he's coming out of it. Let's go talk to him. Check you later, Stone. Yeah. Story on. Wallace and Hunt picked him up. Downtown L.A. He was sitting in a parked car at 4th and Broadway. Thought at first he was a 390, but they couldn't raise him. He's down this way. What else? Well, Wallace figured he must be geed up, so they rolled up his sleeve to look for the spike marks. They found him. Find anything on him? 
Yeah, there were two vials of M on the seat behind him, beside him. Prescription stuff. You got that list of serial numbers from the hospital? Yeah, right here. All right, let's go in. Walters? Yeah, Captain? Friday's got a list of the serial numbers on that hospital heist. Hop down and check them against the vials you found in his car. Yeah, here you are, Walter. Thanks, Joe. How you feeling, babe? All right. Kellogg's is Friday and Romero, Central Division. I see him. You want to tell us about it? Nothing to tell. Living high, aren't you? I'm unusual. It's not the way I get it. You're scoring good. Prescription stuff. Birthday present from a friend. Who is it? I want to keep his friendship. Who's your connection, babe? I don't know. You know that morphine we picked out of your car is hot. Is it all of it? Hospital pharmacy was knocked over this morning. If the numbers on those vials of yours match up, you're in a real jam. No numbers on them. You might as well tell us where you got it. I'm not going to be a Fagin for you. Nobody's asking to be a Fagin, Kellogg. That's high-powered stuff. If we don't get anybody else, it can go hard for you. I'm not going to bite the hand that feeds me. Do you want to stand it alone on this one, not the idea? I didn't say that. Well, one of us isn't going to go along and hold your hand. How about it? Who's your connection? All right, it isn't going to be a long wait, Kellogg. As soon as Walters gets back with those serial numbers, you can play hero all afternoon. It'll be on the 12th floor of the county jail, babe. You won't have to wait long there, either. The minute you put one foot in that courtroom, the judge will throw you, throw everything he's got at you. Two bottles of drugstore stuff? Robbery, Kellogg. $10,000. This is good, but two bottles ain't worth that much. Well, you only show a part of it. Maybe you got the rest of it at your plant. You got my plant. 1931 Essex. Four-wheel brakes. Your car's being checked out. Didn't find any more, did you? No. I couldn't be that lucky. You feel pretty good now, but you'll get a yen on. You won't help me. You never do. When's the last time you helped us? Your memory's worse than mine. I helped you. I helped you guys a lot. Don't you remember the Frank Smith plant? No. 1933, Friday night last. I led you right to Smitty's plant. Smitty didn't have no geezer like he found on me. He was a big man. We turned up four kites on him. Not for us, you didn't. Sure I did. Right here in Kansas City. I'd done you a big favor that night. Friday night last. A different town and a different night, babe. You're kidding. In the St. Louis? Singing Steve. Yeah. Don't kid me along. This is Kansas City. Uh, where is the St. Louis? You're in Los Angeles, babe. Los Angeles, California. You're kidding. Clenard wouldn't do that to me. Who's Clenard? Levin's from Baltimore. Hangs out down at the Continental Hotel. That's in Kansas City. Yeah, Marty Clenard. Tough cop. He said to make a hat for me. He didn't want me in KC. Gave me a floater out of town. That's why I came here to St. Louis. You're in Los Angeles, babe. You got it? Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. You told me. Want to step outside a minute? Yeah. Stay with him, Romero. All right. That's it. Checks out, huh? Somebody cut through the serial number stamps on the vials, but you can still make them out. The two vials of morphine we found in Kellogg's car were from the hospital pharmacy. Thanks, Walter. Let's try it again, Friday. Right. All right, babe, now let's cut out the jokes. Those two vials you had came from the hospital. The numbers check out. No numbers on those vials. How do you know? You probably didn't even look at them. Oh, yeah, I looked. No numbers on them. We found them, all right. I don't see how you could read them. I couldn't. Why not? Somebody scratched them off. Who, oh, babe? You wouldn't know. Try it. How much heat do I have to stand if I take it along? Plenty. There was an intern slugged on that job. Hurt pretty bad. They're going to tag you for assault, too. I never hurt anybody in my life. How do we know? I just told you. We don't know you didn't pull this job. We haven't got any proof. Uh, once more, what's the count? Goes like this, babe. First degree robbery, five years to life. Assault with a deadly weapon, 1 to 10. Violation of the State Narcotics Act, 1 to 15. You can add. They'll lose you up there. You can get a real yen on by that time. There's no buzzing up at Q. I can't go that route. Where'd you get the stuff? I'd rather be a Fagan than spend 50 years at the joint. You convinced us. Where'd you get it? Anybody turned Fagan before they spent 50 years at Q. No, I can't go that route. Where'd you get it, babe? From some joy popper. Who? I gave him 700 bucks. Clean me. Who? Come to me, passing himself off as a croaker. I can spot a guy's been hitting speedballs a mile away. 
I knew he wasn't any crooker. What was his name? He was scoring good somewhere. Oh, that's Cecil and Mary. Now I know where he got it. Give us his name, babe. He's a bit clear in pictures, Leonard Castle. Where is he? You're in Arizona, on location. How could he be on location when you brought that stuff from him this morning? Hopped the plane this morning. He was on his way. Leonard Castle. Picture actor, that right? You got it. Run it down. 10 a.m. We checked the name Leonard Castle through R&I. We found nothing. We looked in the phone book and got the number. Garfield, 3711, Central Casting. Central Casting. Los Angeles Police Department calling. Yes, sir. Do you have a Leonard Castle registered with you? One moment. Yes, we do. Wonder if you could tell me if he's working. Oh, just a minute. I have his card right here. Yes, he's working. He's doing crime report for Schumann and Kester, independent production. They're shooting over at Sound Stages Incorporated. They're working today? Yes, he is. You're sure that company's not on location? No, we have no location showing for that picture. Well, could you give me his call, please? Surely. He had a uh, 9 o'clock call today, stage 3. Did you wish to see Mr. Castle? Yeah. You shouldn't have any trouble locating him over there. We'll find him. You are listening to Dragnet. Actual case histories taken from official police files. If you smoke a long cigarette, it will be in your interest to listen to these case histories taken from the file marked Fatima. On this card, reporter Lee Silver's statement. I need an extra mild cigarette. No other long cigarette I've tried is as mild as Fatima. Here is Nurse Shirley Gilman's statement. When I go off duty, I appreciate a mild cigarette. Fatimas are extra mild. I can enjoy them more. On this card, the statement by drama critic Richard Watts, Jr. Anyone can tell Fatima contains the finest tobaccos. It's extra mild and has a much better flavor. All agree, it's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. And that's what more and more smokers are discovering every day. Yes, actual figures show Extra Mild Fatima has more than doubled its smokers coast to coast. So enjoy Extra Mild Fatima yourself. You'll agree. It's wise to smoke Extra Mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke Extra Mild Fatima. Best of all, long cigarettes. a.m. Central Casting gave us Leonard Castle's home address, and Detectives Long and Hunt went on immediate stakeout. Ben and I drove out to Sound Stages Incorporated and checked in at the reception desk. We showed them our identification. We were issued a pass to Sound Stage 3. This is Stage 1. Stage 3 ought to be down there. Yeah. Not a very big lot. No, it's pretty small. Watch the truck, Ben. Think Kellogg knew what he's talking about? We'll know in a couple of minutes. Not very usual. Joy Popper pulling a job like that. They all start somewhere. Huh. That's a good way to get around a movie lot. Bicycle. Better than walking. Sure a thick fog, isn't it? Yeah, we don't have them often, but when we get them, they're a real pea super. Well, here we are. You better hold it, Ben. Red light. They're shooting in there. Oh, yeah, I didn't see it. Well, stage five, you know? Couldn't tell you. No, oh, thanks. All clear. Let's go in. Hey, uh, fella. Yeah. What if you can tell us where we can find Leonard Castle? Sure. Rosie, call Leonard Castle, will you? Fellas on the scene. Okay. Leonard Castle. Leonard Castle. Guess we can wait over here by the phone, huh? He'll be right here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Rosie, you call me? These gentlemen want to see you. Thanks, Willie. You want to see me? Your name, Leonard Castle. Yeah, that's right. Police officers. Yeah? There's some place where we can talk. Well, is this all right? I got to stick close. I might be in the next shot. All right. You know a fellow by the name of Babe Kellogg? No. He says he knows you. No, I never heard of him. You sure? Put us on a bell, George. Hold the work. Quiet down. Quiet. Have to... Hold it a minute, they're lining up a shot. Lefty, move that fruit about a foot and a half to your right. That's it. Hold it right there. 
Make it a little hotter. A couple of turns. Whoa, whoa. That's better. Baxter, give me an inky dink right here. Camera left. Harry. Hello. When Fred Conrad crosses over the table, can you help me out a little? Can you bring this one down about two points on the dimmer? It's done. Time to get that? Uh, Already, Miller. Mr. Conrad? Yes, sir. Take it real easy. Remember, you don't know your sergeant's got a clue until he comes to you with it. All right. You're anticipating a little bit, okay? Mm-hmm. Let's try it. Bob, watch that mic shatter. We're getting it on that wall. Am I out now? Not too much. You come in a little. That's fine. You're clear. All ready? All ready. We can try one. Turn him over. Rolling. Speed. Action. All right, Chief. As soon as I get all the clues, I'll be right down. Piece of that broken window, huh? That's right. It's plastered with fingerprints. Yeah? They got our man. Cut. Yeah. Save him. Sure. Let's hold it quiet, folks. You never heard of Babe Kellogg, huh? That's right. Where were you at six o'clock this morning, Cass? In bed. You got men out your place checking? Well, what's it all about? Between six and seven o'clock this morning, somebody robbed the pharmacy at St. Christopher's Hospital. They slugged the intern, made off with over $10,000 worth of narcotics. Yeah? If we find you were in bed between six and seven, you're clear. Oh, I was. Anybody to back up that alibi? The landlady, I guess you'd know. What time she'd generally get up? Oh, I don't know. Why? Well, she couldn't very well back you up. She was still asleep. Well, she's usually up early. Thought you said you didn't know what time she got up. Well, I meant I don't usually know. But you knew this morning? No. And you don't know Babe Kellogg? Simmer down, everybody. Let's have it quiet. Sign them off. What do you read on that junior, Harry? Nine plus. It'll make it a little hotter. A little hotter, Jack. That's it. Whoa. Ten plus, Steve. That's it. How about it, Steve? Anytime. Turn him over. Rolling. Speed. Action. All right, Chief. As soon as I get all the clues, I'll be right in. Look what I found, Jack. Piece of broken window, huh? That's right. It's plastic with prints. Yeah? We got our man. Cut. Jake, you said plastered with oh, prints. Oh, the line reads plastered with fingerprints. You gotta say the whole word. They'll never know what you mean in Vancouver. Yeah, Come here, I'll talk to you. Hold the word. Keep it quiet. That's Miller. He's a tough director, but he's a good one. How long have you been doing this kind of work, Castle? Oh, six, seven years. What pictures you been in? Oh, I don't think you'd have noticed. They're mostly small parts. What kind of parts you got in this picture? I play a cop. What would you like to do? In this picture? No, I mean, what's your ambition? You gonna stay in pictures? Yeah, I'd like to like to get a few bigger parts if I could. It's pretty tough to try and sell yourself to producer if he can't see you on film. Money's pretty good, though, isn't it? Oh, it all depends. It's a different deal on each picture you do. Mm-hmm. You have an agent? No. no. I did have. Wasn't doing anything for me, so I let him go. I'm not represented. Pretty hard to build any kind of a name without an agent, isn't it? It all depends. If you can keep up a good front, nice car, that's all that counts in this town. You really believe that, do you? I taught you. Well, I don't know much about it. I'm not an actor. You said you didn't know Babe Kellogg at all, didn't you? No, I don't know. You said you saw your landlady at 6 o'clock this morning. No, I didn't say that. Well, there's Theodore Milton, the director. Would you like a meeting? What time did you see your landlady this morning? Oh, Mr. Milton. Yeah, Castle. When are you going to get to me, Millie? You need me in the shop? No, still on the same thing. We'll get to you till after lunch. Yeah. You can stay with your friends. Okay. What time do they break for lunch, Castle? Oh, this company usually breaks around 12.30. Hmm, it's only 11.15. Maybe we can go outside and talk. The director said he didn't need you. Why, you uh, never want to believe the director. It's always the first assistant. We could check with him, couldn't we? Oh, I don't like to do that. I... Hate to ask any favors. Said he wasn't going to use you till after lunch. Well, it isn't a good policy to bother the first assistant. Well, it's probably better in here anyway. I didn't see any place to sit down outside. Unless you have a car in the lot. You have a car? No, I don't. But you told us you had a car. No, I, I didn't tell you that, did I? Well, you said something about keeping up a good front, nice car. Isn't that what you said? Oh. Oh, sure, I have a car. I, I don't know what I was thinking about. Yeah, I have a car. Mm-hmm. I thought you said you had a car. Well... Tell you, this picture act will drive you crazy. I don't know what I'm saying after that. Uh... Maybe you made a mistake about Babe Kellogg. Do you know him? No, I'm sure about that. I don't know any Babe Carson. Kellogg. Oh, Kellogg, you know, I, I, I don't know him. Would you mind showing us your wallet? Well, what for? You want to see my identification? Can we see the wallet, please? All right. Here you go. No, you hold it. Would you open it up? Okay. Quiet, please. All right, please. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Rolling. Babe. All right. Nice and easy now. Fingerprints, Jake. Right. Action. All right, Chief. As soon as I get all the clues, I'll be right in. Look what I found. 
Piece of broken window, huh? That's right. It's plastic with fingerprints. Yeah? We got our men. Cut. Same. No talking. Let's see how much money you got in your wallet, Castle. No, you hold it. Just count it for us. Oh, there it is. What about the rest of it in there? Hmm? All right, I didn't see it. All right, count it. Just a few hundred here. Yeah? Count it. All right. Let's see. Well, I can see 450s right there on top. That's 200, isn't it? Yeah. It's 300. 400. 450. Yeah, go on. I didn't know I had this much. That's 250 more. That makes 700, doesn't it? It's more than I thought I had. There's two more tens and a five there. That's $725 canceled. Yeah. Doing pretty well in this picture, aren't you? It's not all picture money. All right, you can put your wallet away. Thanks. If you didn't make this money on the picture, where'd you get it? Play little cards last night. Play pretty late? Yeah, pretty late. Weren't you tired this morning? No. Not even when you got up at six? Did I say I got up at six? Now listen, Castle. You don't know what you said, but one thing's sure you're lying to us. You know Babe Kellogg and you owe him well enough to sell him two vials of high-grade morphine. Oh, you're wrong about that. All right, then you set us straight. Kellogg says he paid you $700 for this stuff. You got over $700 in your wallet. That's more than you need for lunch money. Now, this could be a coincidence. You set us straight. Well, you're wrong. Where'd you get the money? Turn up. Rolling? Dave, action. All right, Chief. As soon as I get all the clues, I'll be right in. Look what I found. Huh? Piece of broken window, huh? That's right. It's plastic with fingerprints. Yeah? We got our man. Cut. All right, more for Where'd you get the money, Cassie? I told you I played cards. It won't do. Got the keys to your car? I can't leave. We'll get you excused. We want to look at your car. No, no, don't do that. All right, then. Do you know Babe Kellogg? I, I don't know. Turn him. Rolling. Hey, action. All right, Chief. As soon as I get all the clues, I'll be right in. Piece of broken window, huh? That's right. That's plastic with fingerprints. Yeah? We got our man. Cut. Print it. Hold it for a little like... Do you know Babe Kellogg? Yes. Yes, I know him. I know him. You robbed that hospital this morning. I needed it. I needed the money. I had to have it. I, I owed money. They were going to take my car. I, I was broke. What else could I do? I was sick once. I stayed at St. Christopher's. I knew where they kept the drugs. I knew if I could get them, I could make some fast money. I didn't mean to hit the kid. I, I couldn't let him see me. He didn't have to be there, did he? He didn't have to be there. I, I sold old Babe the stuff and the rest is in the car under the seat. I, I needed the money. I was... I was broke. Broke. Better get him out of here, Ben. Mm -hmm. Come on, Castle. That was a great reading. My name's Milton. I'm directing this picture. You the boy's agent? No, sir. Never heard him read better. Funny thing, though. Yeah? In front of the camera, he goes to the dogs. <laughs> story you've just heard was true. Only the names were changed to protect the innocent. On January 28th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 91, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. And now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you. The working detective in reaching the solution of a crime depends on the combined efforts of many minds and many hands. The crime lab, state and federal peace officers, and you, the citizen. And so with Fatima. The combined efforts of many go into their blending and manufacture. Skilled hands, working with the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos, make Fatima extra mild. Best of all long cigarettes. If you're a long cigarette smoker like I am, try Fatima. Every pack is extra mild. Smoke Fatima. Ladies and gentlemen, starting Thursday, August 24th, that's two weeks from tonight... Dragnet will be heard one hour earlier at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Leonard Francis Castle was tried and convicted of first-degree robbery and violating the State Narcotics Act. He received sentences as prescribed by law. Alfred Babe Kellogg was convicted of violating the State Narcotics Act. Both men are now serving their terms in the state penitentiary. You have just heard Dragnet, a 
series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Fatima Cigarettes, the best of all long cigarettes, has brought you Dragnet from Los Angeles. Sarah Berner is delightful in Sarah's Private Caper, next on NBC. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surfer series. Oh, and a man's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Well, in this episode, we heard one of the most inaccurate things you'll hear in a Dragnet episode. Of course, it's a minor point, but since it revolved around the world of mysteries and detectives, I've got to call it out. And that is the reference to Father Brown. Clearly, they thought it would be kind of cute to put in a Father Brown reference, since this was happening at a Catholic hospital. But two things. One, Father Brown was never known for carrying around a notebook. If he was known for carrying around anything, it was an umbrella. He was an amateur sleuth, and his solutions were based on his observations as well as his life experiences with stories like the Eye of Apollo and the Blue Cross. There also was never a story of of Father Brown's called the Triple Cross, and it, it seems to imply that this was a novel. Father Brown's stories were all short stories. It seems like the writers wanted to include the reference, but they hadn't read the books, And they'd heard of the character, but they couldn't be bothered to look at the actual titles of the book. On a much more positive note, I think the uh, scene with the babe character was very fascinating. And it was one of those points where Dragnet is able to really use a sort of show-don't-tell approach to crime um, prevention and in preaching the dangers of crime. It doesn't just say, kids, don't do drugs, drugs are bad for you. Rather, we uh, make this man who doesn't even know what city he's in. That's how much damage all the drugs have really wrought upon him. And that itself is a uh, very powerful message without actually uh, uh, saying a message. The final scene was uh, very intriguing and almost surreal because in the foreground, we have actors playing policemen who are closing a case and behind them are actors playing actors who are policemen closing a case. I I did think that that scene probably did go on a little bit too long. And it was one case where I think any time you have uh, good music or good sound effect, you... Uh, Anything that is a feature of your story, you have to be sure that it serves the main story. And in this particular episode, it felt like the story was serving up the uh, sound effects in this fictional scene with the policeman rather than the other way around. Because we already know who the uh, robber was at the commercial break. And we came back basically to have this seen on the sound stage. So a bit of a mixed bag on this. Still, I do think the part with uh, Babe was very well done, and I thought the scene on the sound stage was good, but could have been a bit shorter. All right. Well, that will about do it for our main uh, comments. Our listener support campaign starts tomorrow, but because of uh, today's episode and its references to Father Brown, you might be uh, curious what the Father Brown stories are actually like. Well, one part of our listener support campaign that starts tomorrow is that in addition to access to our premium site, at your request, we'll send you your choice of several ebooks as well as an additional thank you gift. Among the items we will be offering 
uh, for a donation of $20 or more, we'll send you Colonial Radio Theater's The Innocence of Father Brown, either Volume 1 or Volume 2. And at the $50 or more level, we'll send you one of the two BBC Radio 4 adaptations of Father Brown starring Andrew Sachs. And those options are also available for Patreon users at the patreon.greatdetectives.net at either the Master Detective or Chief of Detectives level. And even if we do receive the donation on Saturday, before the campaign officially starts, uh, if your request is Father Brown, we'll gladly send that along, uh, because Father Brown stories are uh, wonderful. But that will do it for today. Tomorrow... We kick off the listener support campaign with a one-hour listener support special. Our star, the great Orson Welles. And then join us back here next Saturday for another episode of Dragnet. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow-